Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I've I've got some coffee, so I'm I'm feeling a bit better. Good. Yeah. Um, oh, fantastic. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to ask was, you know, why why the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York, why did they join the United Nations? Yeah, so I, I believe um, from your original statement, you said that they joined as a, an NGO. Yes, NGO stands for non-governmental organisation, yes. yes. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so often so the, often an NGO, the, the purpose of that is not uh, supporting the the aims of the organisation, but it's providing no. hum, humanitarian no. It, assistance. It, no, it's the complete opposite. It is to support the aims. You cannot join as an NGO unless you sign a bit of paper where you support the aims of the United Nations. And in the Watchtower's case, annually, between 1992 onwards, it was signed um, by Lloyd um, Barry, who was a then governing body member. And you also, because you had to support the aims of the United Nations in order to be a United Nations NGO, um, you also published articles usually in the awake magazine supporting the aims of the united nations sorry i'm not aware of it so awake magazine supporting the aims of the united nations yes you published a series of articles in usually the awake magazine between 1992 and 2001 you had to do that to comply with your your united nations membership because all United Nations NGOs have to promote the aims of the United Nations through the media, either through print or television or radio or some other means. But you must promote the aims of the United Nations in order to comply with United Nations membership. Do you have an example of an, an article between 92 and 2001 that that does that, that says this is in support of the United Nations? Oh, they don't, they never say this is in support of the United Nations because to their readers, the United Nations, they claim is of the devil. So they're, 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 they're speaking out of two sides of their mouth. To the United Nations, they're saying, look, here's an awake article. We, we support the um, UN. But to... <coughs> But to um, have, you, have you got a sort of an example of even a, a topic? I'm just trying to think how because obviously there's there's lots of topics that come in the Awake magazine, whether it's to uh, whether it's pr to promote uh, good good relations within within the family, within the workplace, to be a you know a, um, a, a law abiding uh, citizen. These are all uh, Bible principles. Mm -hmm. But I struggled. To, I'm struggling to think of a topic off off the top of my head. Obviously, if you've perhaps done more research on this, that you could say. Ah, yes, that's supporting the United Nations and not supporting a Bible principle. And why it would stop in 2001 and... It stopped in 2001 because the Guardian newspaper on the 8th of October 2001 printed a series of three articles exposing hypocrisy by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. These Guardian articles, the Guardian is, as you know, a a uh, highbrow newspaper, rather left-wing, based in London. And um, The Guardian um, basically referred to your um, literature saying, on the one hand, the United Nations is of the devil. But then you joined the United Nations in 1992. And this was somewhat confusing to them. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, I, I don't want to s uh, assume I'm aware of all of the information. I've not uh, researched all of these matters, but I, I do know that Jehovah's Witnesses provide humanitarian assistance throughout the globe to Jehovah's Witnesses after uh, natural disasters and um, and and in conflict. So that would be my uh, first summation as, as, to, as to why they did that, so they could uh, facilitate that on a. On a, on a global level, but, I, but I, as I say, I haven't looked into that yet yeah, specifically. Yes, you don't support non-Jehovah's Witnesses? Uh, that's not, yeah, I've, I've seen many videos of, um, of um, in humanitarian areas where they've um, assisted neighbours in the, in the community, quite, quite the opposite, actually, but I've personally been okay. involved in some of these as well. But I guess, just going back to the neutrality aspect of things, um, I think it's certainly true, Jehovah's Witnesses do not favour 
you know, Australia over Japan and, um, you know, whether it's uh, Germany over um, over uh, Ghana, there's neutrality there. But when it comes to support, giving support to God's kingdom, um, and then um, any sort of a, you know, denouncing message against uh, the rest of the political systems of the world, then without doubt, Jehovah's Witnesses do proactively support God's kingdom. Um, and that does does mean that they're they're not you know there there will be um, references to um, the worldwide um, political system um, and ultimately who's in control of it. Um, just while we were um, having that break, I did even just find I watched our article from May 2020, which you may have come across, um, but it still clearly identifies ones such as um, Russia. Um, as, as being today the, uh, the the king of the north, so I'm not doing that to reference a scripture, but I'm just saying it's the idea that they haven't toned down um, a, a description of these political entities and their role in Bible prophecy. Well, they have because king of the north is not a libelous term, and if you go to court, if the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York is taken to court. And the court has given evidence that you say the king of the north is of the devil. Well, it's difficult to prove who the king of the north is, because you've had so many different interpretations of the king of the north and the king of the south over the years. So um, I've I've also got a reference to that Watchtower, uh, May 2020, the study edition. On page eight, it says that Satan is using the United Kingdom and the United States to persecute God's people. By God's people, you mean Jehovah's Witnesses. Correct. Yes. Um, what I suggest we do is we sort of touch base today. Um, I'm more than happy to go into the scriptures, but if we do that, we have to go into the scriptures slowly by reading all the scriptures. I don't want you to paraphrase. It's not a machine gun. Uh -huh you know, 10 verses at me in two minutes. <laughs> I'd rather I, I deal with things would, slowly. I would, struggle, I would struggle to do that. I would struggle to do that, yeah. uh, Robert, I must admit. I, um, I certainly enjoy looking in uh, <clears throat> the scriptures, but I, I have spoken to ones in the past that, that can um, rat rattle them off, as you say, in a machine gun manner, and it's, yes. um, it's confusing rather than helpful. Um, I'm quite happy to look at the scriptures. Um and I'm also happy to look at what evidence do you have from the scriptures that the UK and the US are of the devil. But one final thing would be the the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society's involvement through its sub-corporations. So I'm not here pointing the finger at the Pennsylvania Corporation or the New York Corporation. I'm talking about you have over a hundred sub-corporations. And through these sub-corporations, various ones, but usually the European Association of Jehovah's Witnesses, you have involvement in a political organization today called OSCE. Well, OSCE stands for Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. It's a political organization. It was set up in the 70s to promote peace within Europe. It was set up with the best of intentions following the SALT talks between Russia and America, where the Soviet Union and America reduced nuclear weapons in Europe and they wanted peace in Europe. And so OSCE was set up in the 1970s with the highest of intentions to promote peace. It's usually made up of parliamentarians from the smaller parliaments from across Europe. Um, if you're a German or a British or a French MP, um, these are major powers in Europe, so you don't really need to be a, a member of OSCE. But if you're a member of a small parliament, such as, you know, the Danish parliament or the Austrian parliament, then by joining OSCE, you have more political clout when you ally up with other MPs from other small parliaments from across Europe. That's not to say that Germans, British and French don't also take part, because they do. Um, well, Jehovah's Witnesses have been members of OSCE. They've taken part in OSCE meetings for over 20 years. They even led an OSCE meeting in Poland in 2019. So I'm you know, I'm I'm kind of <clears throat> I'm kind of puzzled at this. Why are the Jehovah's Witnesses who claim to be neutral? Your 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 article says in lesson forty five, as I say, point two on page one hundred and eighty seven, like Jesus, we do not get involved in politics. 
well, why are Jehovah's Witnesses involved in OSCE? I mean, I, I find it, you know, with the greatest of respect, sir, I find it very, very confusing. For instance, I'll give you, I'll give you one or two examples. There's an OSCE meeting in Cordoba in Spain that took place in 2005. Uh, the 8th and the 9th of June 2005, Cordoba in Spain. Now, taking part in this meeting is the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. They then had the word Christian inserted in, in their title. And they had two representatives, uh, Paul Gillies, G-I-L-L-I-E-S, and Marcel Gillett. Um, there's also various Jewish groups of an extreme nature that take part in OSCE meetings quite regularly and Scientology. And it seems that the reason for these Jewish groups, Scientology and Jehovah's Witness taking part is that they want to extend the hate crime laws. They want to use these politicians to extend hate crime laws and say, look, we are persecuted groups. So the ultra Orthodox Jews, Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses can say, look, we can preach our religious beliefs, but people aren't allowed to disagree with us or question us, especially in print or on the media or on, or on the Internet. Because if they do that, we want the laws to say that that is a hate crime. So they want one way dialogue where they preach and people can't answer them back. And that's probably where this is going with the constant involvement of Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses, and certain um, rather extreme Jewish groups, as well as what occasionally some extreme Muslim groups with OSE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Uh, I'll give you one other example. Um, well, I was just going to ask, um, Robert, yeah. sort of your objective of all of this, what are you, what are you sort of searching for? Are you sort of, because you've you spent a lot of time looking into this, is this sort of, um, you know, uh, I guess has this sort of precluded your ability to, to, to get to know God, to get to know Jehovah? Have you begun to sort of investigate his, his, his personality, or is this purely a sort of an analytical study of, of, of things? It's, just, just be handy to know your objectives really. well if you read your new testament what did jesus do did jesus go around singing kumbaya and strumming a guitar you know jesus jesus did jesus strum his guitar and just love everyone and sing kumbaya and hold people's hands jesus had dialogues with the religious leaders of his day the scribes and pharisees of his day and they asked him yeah. questions yeah. and he asked them questions back and they became enraged because they couldn't answer his questions. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what real Christianity is about. Real Christianity is about strumming it guitar, raising your holy hands in the air, pr dancing in the spirit and paying your tithe. Yeah. That might be what I was told when I was an evangelical Christian that I had to pay my tithe, speak in tongues, dance in the spirit and, and whatever. Yeah. But real okay. Christianity is going to the Bible, seeing what Jesus did, which is the promotion of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of the God is the rule of Christ. And yeah. saying that that kingdom, that gospel, that good news of Christ's kingdom, which means Christ's rule, his rightful rule over the world, even though Christ is in heaven at the present time, his rightful rule over this world, that's what the gospel is. It's proclaiming Christ as king. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of the religions of the world, including many who claim to be Christian, are opposed to this. And don't think I'm saying for a moment that every single person, and every single Christian denomination is fake, because I do believe there are genuine good Christians, far better Christians than me, in, in, in all of the Christian denominations, including some of the heretical ones. I don't believe that every single Catholic or member of the um, Anglicans or the Baptists or the Church of Christ, I don't believe that every single one of these groups without exception is lost and going to be damned to hell. I do believe there are occasionally some genuine and good people, better Christians than me in each of these groups, but often they're, they're saved in spite of their group's teachings. 
and if you the more you study religion the more you find out that um religions it's not like you know if you if you have pastry and you want to make pies you have a, a cutter don't you 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 roll out the pastry and you have the cutter and you bash yeah. it down you have yeah religion isn't yeah. isn't like that there are millions of catholics who don't believe in many aspects of catholic doctrine many catholics believe the red the bread and the wine is what the protestants say it is it's just bread and wine it's symbolic of christ it's not the literal body and blood of christ so you know you can't point the finger at every single catholic on earth and say you're gonna go to hell and you'll burn in hell for all eternity because not every catholic believes in transubstantiation i've met i i've i've spoken on on the telephone last year and i'll never give the person's name or hint at where this person is this person's a jehovah's witness elder and this person told me that it's complete what the jehovah's witness teaches a complete lie he's a trinitarian he says he's come to a knowledge that jesus christ is fully god and fully man the trinity is true he's a jehovah's witness elder and he says the reason he's still in is because he's trying to get his family out so he's leaving very very slowly to try and take his family with him and i gave up on the evangelical church um, largely because of the trinity i'm a passionate trinitarian so that's why i left and why i now reject much of the evangelical faith because oh, of the trinity so you, do, you do believe in the trinity do you yeah but you need to listen to me the evangelicals yeah. much of them don't believe in the trinity where i live okay okay right they use the word trinity they'll say they believe in the trinity but many of them are not educated people they don't know what the trinity is it's just the word that they use to try and give themselves respect to get the methodist and the anglicans you know the people who got real education to respect them but i have been told over and over again in evangelical churches that jesus is god the father the claim that jesus is god the father is modalism it's an anti-trinitarian belief all right condemned in the first point of the council of constantinople in 381 a.d whether you believe in the trinity or not is almost of secondary importance the fact is people should say and do what they believe if you say you're a baptist pastor or a baptist elder and you believe in the baptist religion then you should you should teach that and believe that if you believe if you claim to be a baptist who believes in the trinity and the fact is a lot of these people don't I've, I've been told so many crazy things i've been told that god is both male and female that was at plymouth christ that was plymouth christian center no it wasn't that was waterfront city church sorry waterfront city church in plymouth on an alpha course that G that god is both male and female because <laughs> you see god made adam and eve male and female so if they're made in the image of god then god must be male and female you see i mean it's a moral image it's not a sexual image but these people are so biblically illiterate but they're on the treadmill they've got a title they've got a church title as a church officer and they, they, they you you can't dialogue with these people i've been told at um plymouth christian center that jesus made two atonements he made a physical atonement on the cross and then he went to hell and made a spiritual atonement in hell and i was also told on an alpha course uh, Plymouth Christian Centre that Jesus is God the Father which I've been told again and again and again so <laughs> the actual title actually is meaningless now it doesn't matter which door you go through yes if you go through a door which says Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witness that doesn't mean anything it, it doesn't mean that you're a follower of, of Jehovah just because you go through a door that says Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. Any more that if you go through a door that says Catholic Church, that doesn't mean anything. Look, even the Pope himself, Pope Francis, doesn't believe in a lot of Catholic doctrine. He's one of the biggest anti, anti Catholics in the world today, Pope Francis. Just as the. Uh, 
the Archbishop of Canterbury is one of the biggest people against Anglicanism in the world. What we're, what we're seeing today is like a second reformation. There was a, there was a reformation 500 years ago when printing began to be developed on a large scale. And so the works of educated men like Martin Luther and then Calvin could be disseminated. Um, but today with the internet, we have a sort of second reformation where ordinary people like me, I'm not anywhere near as spiritual or as godly or as knowledgeable as someone like uh, John Wesley or Martin Luther or John Calvin or C.H. Spurgeon. OK, I'm, I'm just an ordinary person. But hundreds of millions of people around the world, well, I wouldn't say hundreds of millions, maybe it's tens of millions, who believe in Christ and have a passion for Christ can now share their faith online and talk talk to other people online. Do you I, attend uh, regular meetings? <clears throat> no, I, no I, I gave up in 2010. I just couldn't take the hypocrisy. I did attend three Alpha meetings at Plymouth Christian Centre in 2012. And they were the last uh, church meetings I ever attended. I was disgusted at what I saw. Absolutely disgusted. Um, absolutely yeah. disgusted. The whole point of the Alpha course is supposed to be a discussion. And you can't discuss the Bible with these people. Because you're, you're well, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. So have you, have you, so I just wondered why you sort of called uh, my number in, in, in particular, um, because obviously you found, you, you found it from uh, jw.org. Uh, yeah. Sort of... Well, I've been phoning a few Jehovah's Witness elders, as I say, um, about a year ago, I spoke to a Jehovah's Witness elder who's become a Trinitarian and he doesn't give talks from the platform anymore. He's, he's backing out slowly. Um, I won't in any way hint as to who this person is. But I, I've met um, a similar man in the Christadelphian faith. I actually met him face to face many years ago, over 10 years ago. I won't say which Christadelphian hall, um, but he was a Christadelphian leader. And he said, are you Robert Skinner? He, called, he pulled me to one side. He said, are you Robert Skinner? Because I was visiting. And I said, yes. He said, I've got something to tell you. He said, I've been a Christadelphian all my life and I've come to the knowledge of Christ's deity and his full deity, his full humanity, I'm a Trinitarian. But he said, you know, in this group, the Christadelphians, you can't just up and leave because they'll try and take your family away from you. So he said, I have to do it slowly. And that, that's, that, that's what he was doing. And I, you know, I have to support that. Um, but you find that groups that become very harsh right like the um, Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses would be two of the worst um, what happens with groups like that is you you reach a tipping point because you you get people who 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 leave and people then become absolutely enraged and once you've got enough people once you've got several million people um, who've who've left you end up with more people who are ex-Scientologists, then there are Scientologists, and then the whole 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 movement is doomed to ultimate collapse. Except for the fact that, of course, um, they got billions and billions of dollars. The same thing's happening with Jehovah's Witnesses. People are leaving in droves. So many people are leaving in droves. There'll soon be more ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah. Um, well, it's just at 11.30. I have an, another appointment. Yeah, okay. I'll just have a little break in between. So, um, yeah, thank you. Much thank you. Your uh, your time today. Nice to speak to you. Nice to speak to you. I can speak some other time if you want. You've got my number. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.